Hello fellow sim racers, today I'm talking about why Content Manager is far and away my favourite mod for Assetto Corsa. So this video is a little bit different to the sort of things I usually do, but given that I spend a lot of time talking about mods on this channel, I thought it was probably time to talk about Content Manager, which is far and away the most useful mod I've ever used for any piece of software, well, ever. For those that aren't familiar with the rather hype-worthy Content Manager app, it's a feature-packed alternative launcher for Assetto Corsa. Now, removing the jargon, it essentially replaces the program that handles the menus and settings for Assetto Corsa with a much better interface. It's more user-friendly, better looking, and packs some seriously powerful features. If you're already familiar with the Content Manager, then this video probably isn't for you, unless you're particularly interested in listening to a middle-aged British man gush about just how much he loves the ability to save presets. The first and arguably the most used screen in Content Manager is the Drive page, and it has all the settings you would expect to allow you to set up a race, hot lap, or practice session. Starting at the top left, you can select between single player and online modes, the latter of which is compatible with RSR and Sim Racing System, which means you can join races from Content Manager Launcher rather than from your browser. Obviously, you can also join public lobbies from here, and filtering options make it very simple to select which specific server running GT3 at Spa you want to participate in. The single player options are very versatile if you like to race against the AI. Obviously, you can select the basics, like your car and skin, using the very well put together filtering and search functionalities, and the situation is exactly the same for racetracks. All of the usual settings for race rules, AI behavior, grid, and everything else are available, but where it starts to get interesting is with the custom grid functionality. As you can see, I've got this race set up to replicate the Blancpain GT series, with a variety of appropriate GT3 cars selected over on the right. If we click on the detailed options for our opponents, you can see that I've been able to specify which skin belongs to which car. This allows me to get all nerdy and replicate specific series or races with greater accuracy. More importantly, I can save each of these as presets, meaning that I only have to go through this task of assigning all the skins once. Speaking of presets, you can save and recall everything on this page. So as you can see, I have lots of different presets for the different types of races I like to participate in. For example, if we click on the DTM preset, it selects the United Racing Design DTM 2015 cars. Clicking on the detailed options, you can see that I've assigned the 2017 skins, so I've been able to recall a complete race series of totally non-stock content in one simple button click. Be still my beating heart. Moving on from the drive screen, the next page in the main menu documents lap times. Now, I must admit this isn't a screen I often use, but I can see the appeal for hot lappers and for those amongst us that get obsessively competitive. Content Manager recalls the fastest lap from each session you've driven, going all the way back to the birth of the universe. As you can see, it's listed the sessions I ran earlier this week to get replay content for my Salzburg ring video. And as you would expect, you can filter by lap time, track, car, date, etc. Like the lap times page, the results screen recalls the, you guessed it, results for each of the Assetto Corsa sessions you've run. So I can go back in time and take a look at this Group C race from Kyle Army and see that I won the race and just pipped Martin Brundle to the flag. Highly plausible. It also shows the AI difficulty, which I had set between 95 and 98%, and of course the timings. Looking at this, I can see I was much quicker than the AI, so I probably should have had the difficulty maxed out. Oh well. So, while being able to look back at your previous sessions is mildly interesting, what I really like about the results page is that you can actually click the try again button and it will launch a new race session with the exact parameters that you used. I use this functionality a lot, essentially treating it like a media browser when I'm a bit unsure about what I want to race. There's also some cool stats available here. So we can see that on this PC I've driven 359 sessions. My favourite track is Zanvor and I love the Porsche 962C. Apparently, I also drove an Indy car on two wheels for 200 plus meters and pulled a wheelie in a Formula 3 car, so I'm not sure how accurate these stats are. The media page is where you'll find all of your replays and screenshots. Again, this is an area of Content Manager that's made subtle improvements over the stock launcher, but those improvements are a bit of a game changer for someone like me that uses those features a lot. Accessing and launching your replays is dead simple and much faster than the stock launcher. And much like with the results page, you can also jump in and drive a session with the same settings as the replay, which is a very nice touch. 
Most importantly for me, Content Manager also has a sensible interface here, allowing you to select multiple items and do basic things like save, rate or delete them. And this is a big time saver if you use replays a lot. I don't use the screenshots page all that much as I like to tinker with in-game photos in other applications, but the functionality here is pretty much what you'd expect and it's nice to be able to quickly view a screenshot without having to navigate through your file system to find them. The content page has a lot going on. Obviously, it allows you to view all of your cars and tracks, which if you're big on mods like me, it's pretty useful. But beyond the basics, you can also access the car showroom, skins, replace tires and sounds, and rather usefully tweak the setups of your cars. Furthermore, Content Manager comes with its own showroom. It's not something I often use myself, but it is feature packed, allowing you to tweak the lighting, backgrounds and the environment in a pretty sophisticated way. As I said, it's not really my thing, but those of you that like to use Assetto Corsa to take car photos will definitely enjoy those features. For me, the most useful function here is the setups page. This allows you to tweak a car's setup outside of the game environment. This makes it very easy to create a slightly modified setup, say for qualifying or maybe a low downforce version, by cloning the setup you already have and then modifying it. The settings page is easily the least glamorous, but probably the most useful of all in my opinion. Working our way down the Assetto Corsa settings, we start off with the app settings. Now, I don't use apps very often myself, so I probably don't get the most out of the functionality here. As you can see, I pretty much only use Sidekick and RSR live timing. However, if you're a heavy app user, you can set up quick presets. So if you say use one set of apps when you're hot lapping and another when racing online, it only takes one click to change from one setup to the next. Next up is the video tab. Everything you would expect to be here is. Again, what makes this helpful is the ability to save and recall presets. So for example, I frequently switch between using an Oculus Rift headset and a QHD monitor setup. These both need wildly different settings to get the best out of them. And as you can see, I have a series of presets here that cover my various needs as a driver and as a guy that records YouTube videos. The same goes for audio settings. I have a pretty complex audio setup here, so in the future I'll be building a couple of presets to enable me to better use my equipment and to save time switching between settings. The controls tab has everything you would expect and should be pretty familiar to Assetto Corsa users. Again, you can build pretty comprehensive presets here. So for example, I've got a preset that allows me to use my USB button box and one without, as a button box is pretty much impossible to use with a VR headset. Evidently, you can adapt all of your button maps and force feedback settings per preset as well, which may be useful if you switch between rims and other gear frequently. The other tabs aren't overly exciting, but they do give you access to some of the settings that are otherwise hidden in the Assetto Corsa launcher. For example, you can easily enable the developer apps and turn on the free roaming camera or change the color of your ghost car in hot lap sessions, if such a thing floats your boat. Content Manager isn't a particularly glamorous application, but for serious Assetto Corsa players, it's an absolute godsend. For me, the ability to save almost everything into presets is a huge bonus. And while I may be an edge case as a video creator, I'm pretty sure there are loads of other people out there that have to keep changing settings in Assetto Corsa far too frequently for their liking. To be honest, this video has barely scratched the surface of what Content Manager can do. I figured the best demonstration I could give would be to share with you guys how I use Content Manager and how it makes my life easier. The best thing about Content Manager for me is the price. The light version is completely free and it includes 95% of the functionality you could ever want. The paid version is on the pay what you like donation model and I encourage anyone that uses Content Manager to do so. That about wraps up this gushing love letter to Content Manager. If you are interested in downloading this wonderful application, I've put a link in the description. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, it would be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. As always, thank you for donating your precious free time by watching. It is very much appreciated. So all that's left to say is goodbye and enjoy the rest of your day.